Chapter 6, Theory of the Firm and Market Structure. This video is Chapter 6.2 um, about monopoly, monopolistic and oligopoly. We start with monopoly or monopolistic, uh, sorry, monopoly or also known as monopolies. The characteristic, I already explained about the characters of each market structure in uh, video 6.1. So this is only a revision. Characteristic for monopoly first, there is only one seller with many buyers. So in that market, there is only one seller and this seller supply goods and services um, for the whole uh, buyers in that market. And they sell a unique product, which means there's no close substitute or even no substitute at all. And the price, uh, the firm is the price, the price maker. Since there is only one firm in that market, so that market, that firm will determine the price. Okay, the price of that market is equal to market price. Okay, because if in chapter two, demand and supply, to get individual or to get market price, you at all individual supply or individual buyer. But here in Monopoly, because there is only one firm in that market sell that product, so this individual firm, this Monopoly individual firm is also a market um, supply. Okay, so this Monopoly can set the price, the buyer just follow the price, okay, no option because there's no other seller selling the same product, there's no substitute. So the monopolies firms have power to control the, the market price. However, monopolies can only control price or quantity, but not both. It can change the quantity demand to change the price. If the monopoly want to increase the price, they reduce the quantity. If they want to reduce the price, they increase the quantity. I show you, I'll show you later in the diagram. Another characteristic is impossible entry. Okay, among the barriers are ownership of scar resources, and then legal barriers, economy of scale, and financial and technological barriers. For ownership of scar resources, the resources input used to produce that product is owned by this monopoly firm. So if other firm want to join and okay, enter the market, they don't, they don't have access to that resource. Okay, sole control of the entire supply of the strategy input is one way a monopolist can prevent new entering in the industry. And then barrier to enter the market because of legal barrier protected by um, law, okay, protected by the, by the government in terms of the law, license, permit, franchise. So in order to operate in that monopoly market structure, you need a license, you need a permit from government, but the government only issue one for one firm only. Uh, so that makes you cannot join the market. Okay, and then economy of scale. If you still remember in chapter cost of production, chapter five, okay, economy of scale. Um, okay, you have low run cost AC here, low run average cost, which is the combination of many short run cost AC. Okay, so long run average cost LRAC or LAC, you can divide by two section okay the first section here is economy of scale and then this is this economy of scale economy of scale happens when you produce more output but with lower average cost so you enjoy cost per unit cheaper and cheaper as more output you produce so when your ac is lower you can put price lower so if other firm want to join the market, okay, they cannot produce at AC low as you. So they cannot charge price uh, lower. Okay, so maybe their price is a bit expensive. So the buyer will still buy from you. So this firm cannot survive in the industry. So that makes you a monopoly firm. And then, um, Another barrier is in terms of financial and technological barrier. Monopoly firm, usually a firm, uh, a huge, a big firm, and get that produce a huge production. So it is stable and in terms of financial and technological barrier. If you want to join the market, maybe you don't have enough financial support or you don't have 
uh, R&D um, expert team, okay, in terms of the expertise you don't have, okay, so that that makes your uh, apa ni, your, uh, that makes your entrance to that market is blocked, okay, and then advertising is not important in monopoly, uh, because you are you are you are the only sole firm in that market, okay, so advertisement is not important. Okay, if you do make advertising, it is not to promote the sale, but to show to your customer that you care, especially during the first season, you wish Hari Raya. Okay, so it is not because to promote the sales, because if you do not do any advertising, the customer still buy from you because they cannot find from other customers, from other sellers. Okay, the demand for monopoly is a demand for the market. Okay, this is Q and this is P. This is demand curve and this is supply curve. This is market. Monopoly firm, one single firm is this one. One single monopoly firm equal to supply market. Okay, because only one firm in that market. So this is demand for that market in monopoly. So this is the price and quantity in monopoly too. So price and quantity in the market is the price and quantity of the monopoly firm. So the demand curve for monopoly is a normal demand curve compared to perfect competition. In perfect competition, they just follow the price equilibrium. So this is the P and also demand and average revenue and marginal revenue. Okay, this is individual in perfect competition. But here, this is market and individual curve for monopoly. The monopoly facing negative down, downward sloping, okay, which means to increase QD must reduce the price. So it can increase the price by reducing the number of quantity and can reduce the price by increase more quantity. Example, this is Q, this is P. As usual, when you multiply these two components, you will get total revenue. And this is marginal revenue and this is average revenue to get marginal revenue is the change in tr over change in q ar is tr over q okay, today i use a different software so it is not very com compatible with my writing pad so that's why um it's quite struggle to write and draw diagram uh, for this video today Okay, so this is output Q price. As you notice here, the price vary as the output vary. In perfect competition, the price constant at 25 or 5 or 4 or any number, but it's thick. Okay, regardless how much you produce, okay, less or uh, increase the number of production, the price remains the same for perfect competition. Okay, at, uh, regardless at what uh, amount of output. But here in Monopoly, okay, you can charge higher price if you reduce the number of quantity and you can charge cheaper price if you increase the amount of output quantity. So uh, because of a change in price, so the total revenue, marginal revenue, average revenue is not the same. In perfect competition, since the price is constant 25, for example, so marginal revenue is 25 if you calculate. Average revenue also 25. So that's why in the perfect competition, this is price equal to MR equal to AR equal to demand. But in monopoly, this is AR. AR equal to demand. Okay, this one equal to demand. And this is marginal revenue. It is not equal to AR anymore in monopoly. And also monopolistic and oligopoly. Because monopoly has power to control the price, oligopoly and monopolistic has some power to control the price. Okay, so that makes the price differ. Okay, vary as output vary. <clears throat> and when you calculate MR and AR also different. So this diagram or this demand AR, MR is valid for monopoly, monopolistic and oligopoly. And this one is for perfect competition. Okay, only perfect competition, the diagram is different. 
the other market structure, they share the same diagram. So as you notice here, the P is not equal to MR anymore, but P is higher than marginal revenue. So it's compared 16 higher than 14, 8 higher than negative 2. So the demand curve for monopoly, monopoly, see oligopoly here. Okay, at this range, it is elastic, ED more than one. And then here, ED equal to one, which is unitary. ED less than one in elastic here. Monopoly never produce output in inelastic range demand curve because here MR is negative, therefore profit will drop. Okay, the monopoly uh, won't produce the output at this amount more than five unit because the total revenue is dropping, decreasing. Okay, marginal revenue also negative if you produce more, so it makes your profit drop. So the maximum production is 5 in monopoly for this example. Thus, it always charge a higher price and sell a smaller quantity compared to perfect competition. For the equilibrium in the short run, for all types of market structure, including perfect competition, a firm maximizes profit by producing quantity of output where MR equal to MC or where the difference between TR and TC is the larger. So that's the uh, maximum profit. In the short run, all the market structure, are not only monopolies, but also monopolistic and oligopoly, can earn three types of profit, including perfect competition, whether the profit is positive, negative or zero. Okay, let's look in details the short run equilibrium. Okay, how the diagram looks like in monopoly, monopolisty, and oligopoly. Okay, the firm for monopoly, monopolisty, and oligopoly, uh, if in the short run uh, they are facing um, economic profit, positive or super normal profit, you can see here average cost is low compared to average revenue. Okay, if AC here, so this is loss. If AC same with AR, it is break even. But here AC is low, and this is the uh, AR. Okay, so that's why it gain profit in this case. MR equal to MC here. This is MR and this is MC crossing here. So uh, you can determine the quantity at 3 unit. The price you have to drag until the demand curve here. This is the demand curve. So you can determine the price at 14. If in perfect competition, because the price is similar regardless at which level of output, it is very easy to determine the price. But in perfect, in monopoly, monopoly, oligopoly, you have to set MRMC before you can determine the price. Okay. So make sure to drag until the demand curve. Why until the demand curve? If the normal demand is supply, this is the demand and this is the supply. This is the equilibrium. The price is here, the quantity is here. So just imagine there is no supply curve. You have to drag until it touch the demand curve to determine the price. So similar with this one, you just drag up until it touch the demand curve here. So you can determine the price at 14 unit. Okay, so MR, MC here. Okay, this is the quantity and this is the price. To determine the profit, the amount of profit, you have to determine the uh, amount of cost and revenue first. So uh, at this dash dash line here, it touch the revenue here. This is average revenue. So here, the bigger box here refer to total revenue or P times Q. P times Q is total revenue. To get total cost, this dash dash line touch ADC total cost is here. So this smaller box below is the total cost. So total revenue 
minus total cost here, the difference is here positive. So it is a profit. How much the profit? Okay, the height by uh, times the width here is 2, 14 minus 10 times 3, so the profit is 6. Normal profit, okay, as you can see here, total cost tangent with average. Um, average cost tangent with average revenue here. Okay, so at this dash dash line, um, before that you have to set MR equal to MC. This is the equilibrium. So this is the quantity. The price you have to drag the dash line until it meet the demand curve here. Okay, so this is the price. Price 14, quantity 3. Okay, at this dash dash line, okay, it touch or cross AR here. And it also touch ATC here. So this box refer to total revenue and then total cost too. So if you deduct, the amount is zero. For example, um, the 42. Total revenue is 42. Total cost is 42. To get profit, TR minus DC, you get zero. So zero is a break even or normal profit. There's no loss. There's no profit. A condition of loss is when ATC is too high on top, they are below. So revenue cannot, uh, the cost cannot covered by the revenue. Okay, so that's why it become loss. MR equal to MC here at equilibrium. So this is the quantity equilibrium. Okay, and this is the um, sorry, this is the price. You have to drag until the demand curve only. So the price is 14. Okay, at this dash dash line, it touch revenue here. So here is total revenue or P times Q. At this dash dash line, it touch cost here. So the bigger box is the total cost. Total revenue minus total cost, you get negative, which means the loss okay how much is the loss the difference is here negative so 16 minus 14 is 2 times 3 is 6 negative 6 okay that one is in the short run for three market structure monopoly monopoly state and oligopoly but in the long run for monopoly and oligopoly they will earn economic profit why because they have some power and has power to control the price. Okay, the main factor is because there's no competition for monopoly, okay, or less competition for oligopoly. Okay, and more importantly, because the assumption of barrier to enter the market, okay, for monopoly, and it is not easy to enter the market for oligopoly. So that's why you will get economic profit. So ATC below. For monopolistic, in the long run, okay, this firm only obtain break even. Okay, the R equal to TC, so the difference is zero, no loss, no uh, profit, so just zero profit or break even. How to draw the curve? Okay, um, I'm not really comfortable to draw using this uh, software today. But I try it. Okay, this is Q and this is P. Okay, you draw the average revenue equal to demand first, and then this is marginal revenue. Okay, to draw AC, AC that determine whether the firm facing loss or profit. If the AC is below AR here, for example, it is a profit. If AC just tangent the AR, it is break even. If AC is too high compared to AR, so it is a loss. Okay, and of course you need a MC curve to determine the um, equilibrium later. So this is MC. So
So MR equal to MC is here. Okay, and this is the price. And this is the Q. Okay, this is the AC. Sorry, this is the AC profit. This is AC break even. And this is AC loss. Okay, MR equal to MC, P, you have to determine the P and also the Q. Okay, so uh, at this dash dash line here. Okay, uh, this is the total cost. Low, only small if uh, the condition is the profit. Okay, this is the total cost if in break even case. And this is the total cost for the loss case. But the total revenue here, this dash dash line cross here. So the total revenue is only here. Now we back to Monopoly. Monopoly can set price discrimination. Price discrimination can be defined as a practice where monopoly firm charges different prices to different customers for similar goods and services that are not justified by cost difference. In a simple word, uh, price discrimination means that the monopoly firm set different price for different buyers or customers. Okay, why uh, the monopoly uh, doing this? Okay, or implement price discrimination. Okay, this is a comparison. One price and two prices. Okay, if one price is total revenue P times Q, they only obtain 48 total revenue. But if they, let's say, charge different price uh, based on willingness to pay, which is the first degree price discrimination, okay, based on willingness to pay of the customer, maybe this customer willing to pay 16 ringgit, another customer willing to pay 12 ringgit. Okay, so the total revenue is 56. So the extra total revenue the firm gain because of price discrimination is this amount. So the total amount here and here is 56. So the monopoly firm will enjoy more total revenue compared to one single price. So price discrimination benefits the monopolist. There are three types of price discrimination, first degree, second degree and third degree. For the first degree, they sell based on willingness to pay of the customer. If the rich poor come to buy that product and they are willing to buy at expensive price, so the firm will charge a higher price. And then if the poor person come and they, their willingness to pay um, is cheaper, maybe at 7 ringgit only, so the firm will sell at 7 ringgit. Second degree price discrimination, different prices charged for different blocks. Okay, for example, electricity, water supply, okay, based on the um, uh, what what uh, what time or what of electricity that you use. Okay, so for example, for the first five units, it, it is charged 10 ringgit. For the second five units, okay, it is charged 9 ringgit only. So this is the second degree price discrimination. Third degree price discrimination, you sell different price for different market based on geographic or conceptually. Okay, you can separate the market. For example, um, the seller sell maybe in KL 10 ringgit, but in Kuala Pila 8 ringgit or 7 ringgit only. So different geographic area, they sell different prices. Okay, for the same similar Firm. To implement the degree of price discrimination, there are several condition sharat. Okay, the first one, seller must be able to separate the market and resell of goods are not allowed. So if I able to separate my market in KL and Kuala Pila, I can do the degree of price discrimination. Okay, if not, if I cannot separate the market, okay, the people in KL will buy in Kuala Pila and maybe they buy in uh, but okay, or 
um, um, what we say, borong banyak. And then they resell in KL with cheaper price than uh, my price. So the price discrimination is not effective. Okay, so that's why uh, a condition to implement the degree price discrimination, you as a seller must be able to separate the market and resell of the goods are not allowed. And of course, you need a monopoly power. Okay, monopoly power where the difference elasticity demand, okay, elasticity of demand must be different in different market. Monopolies charge higher price when demand is inelastic and lower price when demand is elastic. Recall back uh, chapter 3, elasticity. So you need monopoly power to do the third degree price discrimination. If not, you charge higher price in uh, the other market, okay, you cannot compete with your rival because you still have uh, competition or competitors. Okay, so that's why you need a monopoly power. Okay, so last previous video, you learn how to draw perfect competition diagram <coughs> separately and just now how to draw monopoly diagram separately. But here we do a comparison. So we combine all diagram in one, uh, all curve in one diagram. Okay, so let's look here. In the diagram here, this is uh, perfect competition, MR, AR, demand equal to price. This is in perfect competition. This is the price competition. Okay, MR, uh, sorry, MC and AC here, okay, uh, is for both market structure, perfect competition and monopoly. Okay, so when MR equal to MC for perfect competition, the equilibrium is here, AC, equilibrium for perfect competition. So this is the price and this is the quantity in perfect competition. However, in monopoly, since AR is not equal to MR anymore, this is AR in monopoly and this is MR in monopoly. Okay. So the equilibrium MR in monopoly equal to MC cross here. So this is the equilibrium in monopoly. You drag down, you get the quantity in monopoly and drag until touch the demand curve. This is the price in monopoly. So what you can conclude is price in monopoly is expensive than perfect competition. Okay. And quantity in monopoly is lesser than perfect competition. So in terms of customer welfare and customer benefits, uh, it is not good in monopoly compared to perfect competition. It is more um, <coughs> efficient for um, customer welfare. So monopoly, they set price higher than output. How to draw the curve? Okay, this is the price and this is the quantity. So you draw the AR first. Okay, this is AR equal to demand and this is MR and then draw the AC AC minimum equal to AR in monopoly okay and then this is MC closing minimum AC perfect competition in the long run only obtain normal profit So average revenue in perfect competition equal to AC in the long run, so obtain only um, normal profit. MR equal to MC in perfect competition. Okay, is here. So this is the equilibrium. So this is the quantity and this is the price. But for monopoly, MR equal to MC is here. This is the quantity drag until the demand curve. So that's why uh, in perfect competition long run, uh, they obtain only uh, they obtain a normal uh, a positive profit. Okay, super normal profit compared with mono uh, perfect competition only normal profit. Okay, uh, the important conclusion that you can make is the price in perfect competition is. Okay, um, I have problem to write 
using this writing note a writing pad today. PC is lesser than PM. Price in perfect competition is lesser than Monopoly and quantity in perfect competition is higher than quantity in Monopoly. So this one is better, perfect competition. Monopoly, there are advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of Monopoly okay, avoid wastage of resources because resources input owned by uh, the ownership of resources owned by the Monopoly firm and then there's not too many firm. Okay, so uh, there's no wastage in the resources. However, in economic, this is not efficient. Okay, if you fully utilize the resource, then it can state that it can be stated that uh, the firm is efficient. Okay, by using a fully resources, and then firm enjoy economy of scale because monopoly the firm the only one firm supply to all buyers they produce large scale. Okay, of production, so they enjoy economy of scale. Okay, so AC drop, so they can sell at cheap price. And then stability is ensured in monopoly, the firm, uh, usually a big firm, and then more organized, so more stable. And then this firm, because they have to produce in a large scale production, so they use modern and sophisticated machinery. And then research and development. Uh, price discrimination benefit the poor, especially the first degree price discrimination. Uh, the uh, price is set based on willingness to pay of the customer. So it gives benefit to the poor person. However, the disadvantages of monopoly undesirable concentration of economic power. Okay, the monopoly firm has power because the firm is too big, the dominant or only one firm, a monopoly firm. So they have monopoly power. And then no consumer sovereignty consumer powerless in terms of the price so they just accept the price set by the monopoly okay and inequality of income monopoly firm they earn no uh, positive profit they earn huge amount of profit okay so in terms of in uh, uh, income cap uh, it is unequal or inequality of income okay between the firms in monopoly and other firms Absence of competition for certain industry, maybe uh, because of absence of competition, no competition, no rival at all. So motivation to do R and D is low. Okay, so absence of competition or low R and D, and then allocative inefficiency. Uh, customer has to pay more than the price will result loss of consumer welfare. Okay, because monopoly set higher price with lower quantity compared to perfect competition just now. So in terms of consumer welfare, uh, they face loss here. And then productive inefficiency, resources are not fully utilized. Okay, production is carried out at least at less than the optimum point. Now we go to monopolistic competition. I just show you the characteristic. Okay, there are many sellers, okay, but not too many as perfect competition, but mainly compared to monopoly and oligopoly. And then differentiated product in monopoly state, they sell product which is unique in terms of the packaging, in terms of the taste. Okay, so uh, product are differentiated either physically or psychologically. A differentiated product has close but not perfect substitute. Many substitute but not perfect. The customer are willing to pay more for their uh, item of interest. Okay, especially for the loyal customer. Even though this product is higher than uh, other product, okay, they're willing to spend more for that product. Easy entry and exit in monopolis in monopoly state competition, okay, there are many sellers. Okay, if you obtain profit, okay, it's very easy for other firms to join the market selling the same product. Okay, and if you face loss, easy for you to um the business and exit the market and then non-price competition okay there are many competition there are many uh, sellers okay there are many rivals but they do not compete in terms of the price they compete in terms of the advertising sales promotion free gift and discounting so that's why if you uh, see the television most of the um, advertisement 
comes from um, monopolistic product. For example, um, shampoo, soap, pampers, okay, any other items that is in monopolistic, okay. So they compete in terms of the promotion, advertisement, and others, not because of the price. Because they have some power only to control the price. And then in monopolistic, limited control over its price, some power only to control the price. Okay, in the short run, the monopolistic may face profit, loss, or break even. But in the long run, okay, because of many sellers, easy enter and exit the market so in the long run monopolistic only manage to get normal profit or break even only so this is the diagram when ac is a uh, tangent with the r or when you calculate the box for the r ec that's equal so there's no profit there's no loss why if firm an economic profit in the short run this will encourage them the existing supplier to expand you are happy with the profit so you want to sell more and more so you expand the production at the same time, new firms will enter the market attract, uh, attract with your profit. So they come and join sell the same thing. As a result, supply will increase and this will lead to drop in price. Okay, so drop in price make you loss. When you loss, you reduce the production. Other firm quit the market, so you get the profit again. So in the long in the short run, um in the long run, you only get the normal profit, okay, at the middle. Okay, now for oligopoly, the characteristic for oligopoly, few seller, two onward, okay, and then homogeneous or differentiated product, mutual interdependence, uh, it is a condition in which action by one firm may cause separation from another firm. Okay, for oligopoly market structure, it is very interesting uh, the, I think the most interesting market structure. If you study deeper in oligopoly, they play many strategy. For example, price leadership, price and dilemma. Okay, in oligopoly, the chapter is um yeah many topic in oligopoly actually. But for eco form five, uh, you not go to deep about this topic. Uh, but actually, it is interesting if you read further. So mutual interdependence, for example, there are three firms in oligopoly, firm A, firm B, firm C. Firm A is the dominant, okay, the biggest firm in that oligopoly market. So firm B and firm C will follow price set by firm A. If price A uh, increase the price, they will also increase. So that become the, um, the firm A will become the price leader. Okay, for that market. So that's why it is price leadership. Okay, and many other strategies implemented by oligopoly because they, even though there are not many sellers, only two, three, four, or ten. Okay, but they really compete with each other. Okay, they, uh, they always looking, uh, to their rival, what the rival do and what they should do to compete with that rival. Another characteristic for oligopoly is difficult entry. Okay, that's why it makes the oligopoly market few seller only. Okay, because difficult to enter. They enjoy the profit. Okay, but for other firms to join the market and enjoy the profit too, it is not easy. Okay, because there is a barrier. Okay, barrier in terms of the financial barrier. Okay, maybe you need to inject more investment, huge investment. Okay, in terms of the technology, in terms of the R&D, okay, you need more uh, expert to, uh, for doing that, okay. And then, uh, if you occur loss, okay, for example, TNB, uh, uh, sorry, not TNB, for example, Cellcom, Messis, um, Apple, Samsung, uh, Proton, Produa, Okay, they are facing loss. It is not easy for them to quit the market because they already invest huge investment. If they quit the market, the loss become bigger, become worse. Okay, so that's why it is hard to enter and exit, difficult. And then non-price competition. Uh, this firm, they're not compete in terms of the price, but in terms of the uh, advertising, just like a monopolistic. Okay, however, 
here they keep a close eyes to their rival. For example, Samsung and Apple. What Apple uh, introduced later will be introduced by Samsung or either one. Okay, the similar thing with the Proton and Produa. If Pro if Produa um release um Asia, okay, the Proton will release Iris, okay, with a similar just like a similar uh car uh, in terms of the size compact car. Okay, the price also not really differ. Okay, so they compete. If the massive Maxis introduce um student plan, okay, uh Cellcom will produce uh a similar plan to to compete with their rival. So this is in oligopolis. Okay, they compete uh, through advertising, through R and D, through technology advancement, especially handphones, Samsung and uh, Apple. Okay, but the difference between monopolistic and oligopoly is monopolistic they compete in terms of promoting the product advertising, but not they are not looking at the rival too close, just like oligopolies. Okay. In the long run, oligopoly will earn economic profit. The main factor is because small rival, few seller only, and have some power to control the price. Another thing that makes the uh, oligopoly special is the Kinkert demand curve. Kinkert demand curve is introduced by Sweezy, okay, one of economics or economic philosophers. They introduced the model, so it is known as Sweezy's model. This model explains price remain relatively stable over time and why oligopolist firm is facing Kinkert demand curve. Okay, as you can see here, after point A, Okay, AR terpatah, tingkat. Okay, a normal AR and demand. Yeah, AR and demand. And this is MR. But for tingkat demand curve or Swiss model, it is tingkat or terpatah after this level. Okay, for uh, equilibrium or profit maximization output, MR equal to MC. So this is MR and this is MC. Let's say MC1 first. So equilibrium point happens here. Okay, MR start from here to point B, B to C point, uh, MR juga ya. Okay, and then this one. So all this line is MR. So when MR cross MC here, okay, so this is the quantity and drag until the demand curve, you'll get the price. Okay, let's say if the cost change, let's say the cost increase, marginal cost will increase too from M1 to M2. Okay, but not much. Okay, uh, so still change okay, in this region, the vertical region here, the vertical segment here. As long as the change in MC in this vertical segment, okay, you can see that the price. This is the equilibrium. The price is constant. The quantity is constant, just like here. Before the cost change and after the cost change, if the MC change, the P and Q remains constant. Do not change. Okay. This is in Kikert demand curve. As long as MC cut MR in vertical segment. However, if cost change huge, okay, menyebabkan MC shift. Here, yeah, too far from the existing, okay, outside the vertical section here, okay, or here, okay, then the price and quantity will change, okay, for example, we look here, this is MC and this is MR, so the quantity drop, the price will increase, for this case, okay, for this case, this is MC, this is MR, so this is quantity, quantity increase, however, the price drop. Okay, so if the MC change outside the vertical segment BC here, okay, then the price and quantity will change. Okay, if the cost only small portion change will make the MC shift, not far away from existing one or still in BC line here, 
vertical segment here. Okay, P and Q remain constant. So that's why price is rigid. This inkert demand curve based on two assumption. If one firm reduces the price, rival follow the cut in price too. Why? To prevent uh, to lose the customer to the first firm. However, if one firm increases the price, the rival will not follow because they want to grab the customer from the first firm to buy from them. Okay, this is one of the strategy. Thus, each firm face a demand curve that is inkert at the current price and output. Above inkert here, this is above inkert here. Okay, the demand is elastic. Increased price will drop the sale. Okay, but below Ginkert, demand is inelastic here. So if price drop, small increase in sale. At price P, the oligopolies will sell at output Q. Okay, here. At price P, the oligopolis will set at output Q. Above P, demand is elastic. Private firm will not match the increase in price because the fall in quantity demanded will be greater than increase in price, which is loss of sale. At prices below P or below A, the demand will be inelastic, meaning the quantity demanded is not very responsive to a price drop. Any reduction in the price of the oligopolis will be matched by reductions by other firms. That's why the Kinkert demand curve relate to price rigidity. Price rigidity means the price do not uh, does not change. This explains why price usually remain unchanged for a long period of time. Okay, because of the unusual AR curve, MR curve, also unusual, uh, unusual. Okay, um, so MC may increase or decrease. MC one, MC two. Okay, MR, MC equal. At the same quantity and same price. Thus, the Kinkert demand curve model predicts that price and quantity will be insensitive to small cost change. Okay, Q remain the same. Okay, if the small change in MC. Okay, but we respond if the cost change are large enough here. Outside the vertical segment here. How to draw the curve? Okay, so you draw the elastic demand first, and then after a certain point, it becomes inelastic. Okay, sorry for my drawing. This is demand and also AR. Okay, and then put a dash line here. Okay, this is the MR. Okay, and this is the marginal cost. Okay, so we're done with all topics and chapters in microeconomics. The first part in our course this semester uh, already be covered. Okay, so the next chapter is the first chapter in macroeconomics, the second part of Google 105.